Give the Lord a hand praise. Y'all, come on, give the Lord a hand praise. If he's done anything for you, the song says, Great Jehovah, you are good and we won't stop praising. It doesn't matter how I feel, we won't stop praising. It doesn't matter what I go through, we won't stop praising. It doesn't matter what I face, we won't stop praising. I will not stop praising. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Guys, the song says, listen, we won't stop praising. So listen, let me tell you something. When the enemy want to tell you this and that, say, yep, but I won't stop praising. <sighs> is, it gonna, is this going to hold? Is this going to hold? I really would rather it go this way. Pastor Jordan, can you please? How are we doing today, Words Way? Are y'all feeling all right? Are y'all feeling all right? I'm feeling mighty fine myself. Thank you, Pastor Ed. So guys, we are here another Sunday, another opportunity we have to give God praise, another opportunity we have to hear his word. Um, as you guys know, our pastors, Pastor Calvin and Pastor Penny, um, yes, give the Lord a hand praise for our pastors. Amen. We have great leadership here. Give the Lord a hand praise for them. They are away. They are getting rest and rejuvenation and refreshing and relaxation. It takes a lot to pastor a church, especially when they got Negroes. It takes a whole lot. So I'm thankful that they have enough uh, the mindset to get away and to hear from God and to get a fresh word from him and just to recuperate and just to, 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 re, to, to get renewed. So in honor, I just first want to give honor to our pastor, um, Pastor Calvin and Pastor Penny. Um, I also <laughs> want to uh, give honor to my husband in his absence. <laughs> I thank you guys for coming out today. Um, so we are going to get into the word of God. Y'all I know, I know I get straight into it. We have been in a series called Growth, and Pastor has taken quite a few weeks um, he told us that it was birthing season, and then he talked about how we had to uh, watch our crew and who we hang around, crew love, and then he said, make sure that you get your weight up, <laughs> and then he said, it's time to grow up, and he took us t two weeks to tell us that, <laughs> that it's time to grow up, but as I was um, just thinking about what God wanted me to share, and we're still in the growth season, in the, in the, in the growth series, but um, for a while now, guys, probably, when we were in the fast, um, a lot of you guys were in, in the fast, you participated in the fast this beginning of this year, in January, and um, but during that whole time, you know, for the most part, I was praying for other people, but anytime I would pray for myself, I would like, Lord, what, like, just talk to me, what you, and he kept saying, prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. And even towards the latter part of last year, God had given me that word, prepare or preparation. And I even had people calling um, or, or sending me a text and said, I don't know, this is what God wants me to give you. And it all went back to preparing. So as I was praying, um, the Holy Spirit kind of just brought that back to, 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 to my, my, my remembrance. And, 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 and so we're going to, we're going, we're going to talk. Um. A lot of us are believing and praying to God for stuff and for things. And the thing about it is, is that you have to be in position to receive it. Hmm. So one of the things that God shared with me was, can you, you know, because he's been telling me, tighten up here, do some stuff over here, change that over there. You're doing good here, but I need more. You're doing okay there, but I need more. And so I'm like, God, what, why, why, what is this? What, what am I preparing for? What am I preparing for? Can you tell me what I'm preparing for? And he said, everything you've asked me for. And so I go, okay, God, what? what? 
okay, everything I'm asking for, and I would ask again, God, what am I preparing for? And he would tell me the same thing, everything that you've asked me for. Hmm. Okay, okay, God. And then he shared with me, can you see, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Some of us, can I get a chair? Can I chair, Brother Malcolm, please? Some of us, this is, this is what we're doing. We're praying and we're believing God for something. And then this is what we're doing. God, when you come in, I'm praying, I'm believing in you. When you come in, God, I'm praying and I'm believing in you. When you come in, I know what your word says. But when you come in, I'm praying and I'm believing. But God says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't manifest promise without preparation. You play a part in what I'm doing, can you? You can't sit over on the sidelines and just believe me and just pray. You play a part in what I'm doing in your life. You play a part in what it is I'm trying to do through you, with you, for you. You play a part. All right, God. All right. Okay. I play a part. He said, yeah, you play a role in what I'm trying to do in your life. Words wait. We play a role in what God is trying to do. Hmm. He said, Kenya, it's going to be a collaboration. What do you mean by collaboration? A collaboration is when you actually work with someone else to produce something. So God says, in order for me to really do what I want to do in your life, in order for some of them prayers to be answered, it is going to take a collaboration where we're working together so that I can produce what I want to produce in you. Somebody say, I got a role to play. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know what? You know what? I'm going to let scripture show you that we have a role to play. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Verse 11 says, and Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem. He reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, 10 men with leprosy stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, go. Show yourselves to the priests. And the Bible says, and as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Tell somebody, I got a role to play. How about John chapter 9? John chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And Jesus was walking along. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciple, his disciples asked, was this man born blind? Why, why? Why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of, because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with saliva, spread the mud over the man's eyes. But this is the part, this is the part. What's the next verse say? Can you do, can you, can, go, can you, ne, anyway, he spread mud over the man's eyes. And guess what, guys? He said, go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam. And the Bible says once he washed his eyes in the pool that he had his sight. You need to realize and understand that you have a role to play in what God wants to do in your life. You are not to sit on the sidelines just waiting for breakthrough. You are not just to sit on the sidelines just waiting for healing. You are not just to sit on the sidelines just waiting for God to do it. He said you have a role to play. Hmm. How about we talk about, um, and I didn't give this to you, Pastor, and I'm sorry, um, but I'm just coming. Mark chapter 5. And in that scripture, the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says she had been dealing with that for a very long time. She spent everything that she had, and there was a crowd. Jesus was coming through, and she said, I got to press my way through the crowd because all I got to get to Jesus. If I can just touch the hem of his clothing, the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. But what she had to do first was she had to press. You have a role to play. Okay? You still don't believe me? Okay, that's okay. Jesus was at a wedding. 
in John chapter 2, and they ran out of wine. And Jesus, or uh, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, came to him and said, Jesus, we didn't ran out of wine. Jesus said, woman, why are you telling me? He said, my time hasn't come. Mary was smart enough to know, wait a minute, wait a minute. She told the servant, she said, whatever he tell y'all to do, do it. <laughs> and so there were six water, uh, water jars. They held about 20 to 30 gallons. 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus said, fill them up with water. And they filled them up with water. He said, now draw. And guys, they drew, and there was wine for the remainder of the wedding. And not just any kind of wine. It was the best wine. I'm telling you, whether it, listen to me, listen to me good. Whether it's you showing yourself to the priest. Whether it's you washing your eyes in the pool of Siloam. Whether it's you actually uh, 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 filling water pot jars. He said that you have a role to play. You cannot sit on the sidelines just praying and believing. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Most of the miracles that you see in the word of God, they actually don't come without an act of obedience or an act of faith. Without an act of obedience or an act of faith. So yes, you can quote all the scripture you're going to quote. Yes, you can pray all the prayers you're going to pray. But without an act of either faith or obedience, without a collaboration with Jesus... All right, all right, all right. Listen, listen. This is what we do. This is what we do. I'm going to get practical. This is what we do. I'm going to get practical. We got diabetes and high blood pressure. We got diabetes and high blood pressure, and we, oh, Lord, I know you want me healed. I know you do. I know you, your scripture even said that you sent your word and you healed them. Look, we've got all extra with it. Uh, you are Jehovah Rapha. I know that you are the God that healed. But yet we will go to Freddy's and get a double bacon cheeseburger with some french fries and a, had the nurse to get a diet Dr. Pepper. Tell, tell somebody I got a role to play. How about this? How about this? Eh, eh, Lord, I want a kingdom man and a kingdom woman. Oh, Lord, I want, I want the kingdom man and I want the kingdom woman. But wait a minute. The person you got in your bed, who are they? But I want a kingdom man and a kingdom woman. Girl, your attitude is bad. What kingdom man going to want to deal with that? Bruh, you selfish as a mug. Do you know marriage is about giving yourself up for the other person? Come on, you got a role to play. Financial blessings, Lord, bless me. Financial blessings, Lord, you know what I need. Lord, you know what I need. Just, just, just give it to me, Lord, you know what I need. Good measure, huh? We get to quote in that scripture, you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, you own a cattle on a thousand hills and you own the hills too. Look, we get cute with it, but yet we don't tithe. We have no level of generosity. Oh, y'all ain't going to work with me today. We have no level of generosity. How about this? The Bible says in what, Romans 13, 8, pastor actually used that scripture here, not so, I think it was a Wednesday night. The Bible, it says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. But this is us. Bring, hello? Yes, I'm looking for Kenya Verner. This is she, who may I ask who's calling? This is Evergy calling about the light bill. Oh, uh, she's not here right now. <laughs> oh, y'all trying to say this is not what we do? Dodging bill collectors, and he said, no, 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 we will, I want everything in excellence. I want everything to be done according to my glory. You got a role to play. How in the whole world can I trust you with a million? You can't even deal with 50,000 a year. Lord, I want a house. Oh, God, I want a house. Lord, I know, I know, I know. It's your way. Like, you don't want, like, Lord, I, I can, you, you said I can have the desires of my heart, Father. I want a house. Girl, your apartment is nasty and tea. It's toe up from the flow up. See, ain't nobody going to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. How in the world? Stewardship shows God that you're ready for something else. If you can't take care of what he gave you now, what makes you think he's going to give you more? Tell somebody I got a role to play. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> listen. When I was thinking about, you know, the Lord, he, he funny. When I was studying, when I was getting this all together, and the Lord was saying, yep, Kenya, like you. Oh, I say, bud, you want to, come on, Father, you know. I'm... 
And he's like, yep, I've been telling you to lose weight for years. I've been telling you, you know that you know the diseases that go on in your family on both sides. I've been telling you to go for several different reasons. I've been telling you, and what do I do? I say, Lord, I'm going to do it on Monday. <laughs> and then, hey, don't let it be a new month coming up. This, I, I'll just start on the first. But let me tell you something. God had to shake me about a week and a half ago and say, listen, you're procrastinating promise by not preparing. All you're doing is procrastinating. What I'm trying to do in your life by not getting yourself. Ah! See, what it is, is we want promise, but we don't want process. We want promise, but we don't want pruning. We want promise, but we don't want to be pure. We won't promise, but we don't want to be productive. We won't promise, but we don't want to persevere. We won't promise, but we don't want to be patient. And he said, all of that stuff is what's preparing you for what I have. And that leads us to the title. We in the growth series. That leads us to the title of our lesson. From preparation. I'm sorry, that was the introduction. Yes, that was the introduction. Because I needed to paint a picture of what God is saying. What we're not going to do as believers and what we're not going to do as people who say that they love God is to sit over there and not do stuff in excellence. It's to sit on the sidelines and just pray and shout. And there's no effect in our life. We're not walking in excellence. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. No, 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 no. He said this is a collaboration. We, me and you going to work together to get it done. From preparation to promise. I got a role to play. Tell somebody I got a role to play. Uh, listen, guys, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Obedience in your today will bring about God's manifestation in your tomorrow. Good stewardship in your now bring about God's productivity in your future. If you can't obey God and move in faith now, he said, you're not ready for what it is I got. I'm not blessing no mess. Now, here's the thing. God is so gracious. He's so good because sometimes he'll give us stuff, guys, right in the midst of complete chaos. He said, but some of this stuff that y'all asking for, he said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I need you to do some stuff. It needs to be a collaboration. Four things he gave. Four, just four. Just four. First of all, what, what does it mean to prepare, guys? What does it mean to prepare? Mm. That's one of the definitions I got, to get ready. It is to make ready beforehand for purpose or for use. Just yesterday, I was studying, I was looking at this, my lesson, and, and God says, Kenya, I need you to live on ready. And I said, well... He said, live on ready. And I said, well, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? He said, if I decide to bring your miracle today, you need to be ready to go. If I decide to have your breakthrough tomorrow, you need to be ready to go. Your mind, your soul, your body, and your spirit needs to be ready to go. You need to live on ready. That means it's a continual, a continual lifestyle of holiness, a continual lifestyle of excellence. If he tell me to do it, I got to do it because I got to stay on ready. What if God just decides later on today that it was time for your miracle and you get there and you got a bad attitude? No, 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 no. We gonna live on ready. So let me tell you something, Wordsway. We need to live on ready. I know the building is being prepped over there for us. It's just over there just waiting on us. But God says right now, live on ready. I want you to invite people to this very building as if you already got the other one. I need you to go ahead on and minister to people like you already got the building. I need you to live on ready. We have instructions. Instruction number one. Instruction number one. Get rid of the weight and sin. Get rid of the weight and the sin. Because see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sometimes stuff ain't sin, but it's weight. Listen, me being friends with her, that ain't a sin. Oh, but it's the weight. Make sense? He says, some stuff I need you to get rid of because it's slowing you down. A 
All right. Romans chapter 12, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at the scripture. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight and sin that slows us down, especially, look at what, the sin that so eat. Wait a minute. So I have to strip off the weight that's slowing me down, but then I have to also get rid of the sin that's tripping me up. Listen, when you think about a track star, when you think about somebody who's, 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 who's preparing for a race, right? See, the thing about it, y'all notice that they be having on those, you know, be having those, those little doodads. They be having on those shorts and real light. You want to know why? Because they don't need nothing trying to keep them from, from, the, from slowing them down, from getting to the finish line. Listen, they said, listen, at the very least, I want the best opportunity to be able to get to the finish line. So they, 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 they travel light. Oh. What is it in your life that may not be a sin, but that's weighing you down? And God says, I'm trying to put you in preparation mode. I'm trying to get you living on ready, but you still trying. Here's us. God says, leave them alone. That ain't your husband. So what we do is we stop shacking up with them. But they can still call us in the midnight hour. He said, I need you living on get rid of the weight and the sin. Guys, do y'all not know that disobedience is sin? And disobedience would actually keep you from the promises of God? Oh, y'all don't believe me? Y'all know I got scripture, right? Okay, good. So I want to go. Let's go. Let's first start with, you know what? I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip it, Pastor Ann. I'm going to flip it. Go, let's go to, let's go to uh, Numbers first. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Let's read. In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zen and camped at Kadesh. While they were there, Miriam died and was buried. There was no water for the people to drink at that place. So they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, if only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers, why have you brought the congregation of the Lord's people into this wilderness to die along with all our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? <clears throat> this land has no grain, no figs, no fruit, no pomegranates, no, no water to drink. <clears throat> Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle where they fell face down to the ground. So Moses had the right response. He had the right response. The first thing that he did, he said, you know what, I'm going to the house of God. And I'm going to put my face to the ground. That's not the issue. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to him. And the Lord said to Moses, you and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community as the people watch. Speak to the rock over there and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did as he, as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice. Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff and water gushed out so the entire community and their livestock drank their fill. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them to the land I am giving them. Disobedience will keep you from your promise. Listen.
Listen, Moses had did all that work. He went to the land of Egypt. He had the staff. He performed that through, of course, the God's leadership. The miracles, he did all of that. Parted the Red Sea, did all of that work. And then he came up on a place where God told him to speak versus striking the rock. And he missed the promised land just from that one act of disobedience. So please don't let nobody tell you, girl, you could just do it this, this one time. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel, chapter 15. Pa pa Pastor Calvin has, 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 has went through this course of scripture. We're going to go through it again today. 15, verse 1. One day Samuel said to Saul, it was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people Israel. Now listen to the message of the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy, go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation, men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. So Saul mobilized his army to Talim. There were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. Let's skip down to verse 7. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, problem, and completely destroyed everyone else. Saul and his men spared Agag's life and kept the, kept the best of the sheep, the goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything in fact that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king. For he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. Now, guys, listen. Samuel said, listen here, Saul. The Amalekites, wipe them out. This is what the Lord is saying. Get rid of them. I don't care what kind of sheep, goats, cattle, I don't care what they have. The Lord wants it all gone. And when Saul went with his army to go over to fight, he kept Agag alive, which is the Amalekite king, and he kept the best of all the sheep, the goats, the cattle. Guys, that ain't what God said. How many of us trying to manipulate what God be telling us to do? And here's the thing, and here's the thing, here's the thing. You don't have to put it up, Pastor Ann. But then when, when, when Samuel went to Saul, Saul said, I did it, I promise I did. I did what the Lord has said. And then here's the funny part, y'all. He was repeating his disobedience. He said, yeah, we got Agag, the king, yeah, we kept all the best of the stuff. That ain't what God said. But he was like, yep, I did it. I did it. Lord, I did it. The story goes on to say that Saul was rejected as king. So wait a minute, let me get this straight. You mean to tell me that God had kingship for Saul, but one act of disobedience ruined it? God is saying, listen, this is going to take a collaboration. It's going to take you obey. Get rid of the weight and the sin. Okay, guys, this is what God, and I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. But some of us are married to sin, and Jesus is our side piece. When you talk about a marriage, it's a union. It's a joining together. Some of us are joined at the hip with sin. Matter of fact, we premeditate it. Oh, I can't wait till this tonight. I'm going to get drunk. Hey, come on. It's Friday night. And it's perpetual. We, oh, don't try to play like that. I don't know what's going on. Everybody ain't been saved every day of their life. We, put, we are joined to it. We, 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 but yet, we got Jesus on the side for just in case we need him. Let me give you the definition. Of a side piece. Let me give you the definition of a side piece. I, 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 I looked it up. It says, an affair that you have with someone else with no intentions of forming a serious relationship. I am sorry to tell some of you, Jesus is your side piece. You only want him there for the benefits. You don't really want to have no serious relationship with him because you know if you do, you're held accountable for what it is that you do. You got him over there on the side just in case you need him. 
I had one man tell me, we had a conversation. I think I was at work. I don't even remember when it was. But a man tell me, you know what? I said, why do you do that? Why do you cheat? And he said, because I might need, like, money from her. Like, I might need, like, from the side piece. I might need, like, a listening ear from her. You know, like, she understands me. And, like, I might need, like, all this stuff from her. And what I realized, what is just what he could benefit. That's why some of y'all got Jesus around. I'm going to keep them just in my view for when I need them. Oh, I know it's tough, but it's a fat jack. You don't spend no time with God, but yet you will spend time planning out your next sin move. The series is called Grow. That's what it's called. Guys, it's time for us to grow up. He said, I can't get you a promise unless there's some steps that come before that. So that's step number one. Get rid of the weight and sin. Step number two. Discipline yourself. Y'all, that is not a cliche. Shout out to me. Discipline is not a cliche. It is not a cliche. I know we, we be like, oh my God, I can't do it. Discipline is not a cuss word. He said, I need you to discipline yourself. Because once you get rid of the weight of the sin, you got to keep on walking in that thing. So you're going to have to learn how to discipline yourself. What does it mean to discipline yourself? I'm glad you asked. So to discipline yourself means to uh, the ability to control your emotions and overcome your weaknesses. He said, I need you to have some self-control. Mm. Okay, let's go to the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. This Paul talk. Paul was a bad man. He said, do you realize that in a race, everyone runs? He said, but only one person gets the prize. He said, so run to win. Guys, he's talking about the Christian race. He said, think about this thing. When runners, okay, think about the Olympics, guys. He said, when they run, everybody run. But only one person is going to win the prize. He said, so have that mentality and run like, you're the, oh, like you are going to be the only one to win. All athletes are disciplined, there goes that word again, in their training. Now, they do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an ex uh, eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it what to do, what, uh, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might be a disqualified. So Paul said, listen, listen, listen. I am running this thing to win. I'm living with purpose. I'm living with aim. I'm keeping stuff away from me that shouldn't be with me. He said, because I got a prize that's waiting on me. Yeah. How about this? You got a prize too. And see, here's the thing about God. Here's the thing about God. He's not just talking about your eternal prize of heaven, but he said, I want to get you some stuff down here. He said, but I can't do it without discipline. Watch what you eat. Athletes, track athletes, let's just stay there. Y'all, they don't be eating double cheeseburgers. Especially when they know they got a race coming. Y'all, they, they, they deal with lean foods and proteins and all them wheat grass. <laughs> because they know I got a race I have to run. And the Holy Spirit said when I was studying this, tell them to watch what they eat. Stop listening to your girlfriend. Stop listening to your homeboy. Stop. stop uh, some of these preachers that you're listening to, he said, you got to watch what you eat. Y'all, you got to watch what comes into your spirit. What you feed will lead. If all you are listening to is R. Kelly bump and grind, don't you know by the end of the night you're going to want to bump and grind? Oh, Lord. Y'all, you have to watch what you're putting into your spirit. I'm talking about even what you watch. I know I am not talking crazy. I have been, I'm just going to be transparent. I have been home on a Friday night watching television, be like, nope, too far. I got to turn that off because I already know that I'm in this flesh and my body has experienced things that it probably shouldn't have experienced because I'm not married. And so I got to turn that off. I have to watch what I'm putting into my spirit, man, because if you put it in there, it's going to want to come out. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, your cousin ain't saved. So stop listening to her tell you how to just say this to him and say that to them and say she ain't even got no man. Stop listening to her. You got to watch what you put into your spirit. Lord, it's called discipline. Baby, I don't mean no harm. Sister, I don't mean no harm. But you know what? I, don't, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time. I got, listen, I'm going to hey, this is a personal promise. I'm living on ready. See, I don't got time. Here's another one. Get rid of excuses. Ooh, Lord Jesus. I'm good with that one. I'll be like, but Lord, oh, but Lord, see, I, but I've given up everything else for you. No, you give up that too. What? Get rid of the excuses. God says, listen, listen, listen. In order to live on wedding, you got to get rid of the excuses. If you make, guys, we're not going to be perfect. We're not. We're not going to be perfect. We're going to mess up. Check yourself, Lord. And go. Don't make no excuse. Let me tell you what us as the body of believers do. You know, nobody perfect. You know, God ain't through with me yet. Duh. <laughs> I know God ain't through with you. We still in these fleshly bodies until he get us up out of here. Yeah, I know he's not done with you. That is not an excuse for you to keep on doing. See, let me tell you what that does. All it does is justify. I'm okay with doing what I'm doing because see, everybody do it. See, everybody got a problem. Everybody got a struggle. No, 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 no. Not in this season. In this season, we're going to be doing things in excellence. He said, get rid of those excuses. I don't care what they doing, what them doing. What did I tell you to do? You know what? I got a little scripture for all your good old excuses. I'm just so kind. <laughs> Throw it up there for me, Pastor Kent. Second Peter 1.3. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. I don't really have to go no further than that. So what, your excuse is, uh-huh, but he's giving you everything that you need. Uh-huh, I ain't going to be able to do it because, see, I, oh, my God, it's been three years, and I haven't, you know, I haven't, I'm keeping it above water. I've given you everything that you need through the knowledge of my son Jesus and by my divine power. I've given you everything you need to live a godly life. Stop making those excuses. Well, she did it. He did it. God ain't through with me yet. Nobody's perfect. Duh, walk in excellence and quit making them excuses. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who has called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So guys, when we came into the knowledge of him and we accepted him like for real, for real, he says, listen, I give you something that's called my spirit. I give you power so you can go live a godly life through my word and through my Holy Spirit. You have what it takes to live a godly life. Guys, we got to stop making excuses for why we do what we do. Believe it or not, I am almost done. I think God is sick of excuses, to be personally honest. Adam. The woman you gave me. Eve, you was a snake. Moses, you know, I don't really talk that good, Jesus, you know. I got a speech problem. Jeremiah, I'm too young. Gideon, you know, my family ain't all that great, Jesus. Huh. And what's funny is that each and every last one of them, with their excuses, guys, were able to use them to a great degree. Get rid of the excuses. But, Lord, I got to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Why you want me up at 4? Because I do. Get rid of the excuses. Oh, my God, do you know what they did to me, Lord? Why I got up at the FBFL? I don't want to, Jesus. Not today. Get rid of the excuses. But do you know how they did me, though, Jesus? For years. Y'all, I'm even talking about some stuff that's generational. 
some stuff that your grandmama's mama did that has trickled down. And like you like, didn't nobody, my mama didn't take care of, my grandmama didn't take care of my mama, my mama didn't take care of me. Like, get rid of the excuses. When you come to the knowledge of Christ, he said, I can give you everything you need to be able to live this thing out right. And that includes forgiving those who wronged you. Mm. So when pastor comes back and he says, how come you didn't do whatever, 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 just take the licking and keep on ticking. You know what, pastor? I'm sorry. Get rid of the excuses. So well, let, me, let me see. We're going to get rid of the weight and the sin. We're going to discipline ourselves. Let's see, we got to walk this thing out. And then we ain't going to make no excuses. We're going to be accountable. All right, well, what else, Jesus? Go ahead. He said, now I need you to be consistent. Because see, here's what happens. Lord tells you, stop smoking weed. You don't need it. Get rid of it. Stop smoking weed. Okay, God. Two weeks, you are. Ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, Father. And then the 15th day. Whew. Whew, Jesus. Be consistent. What we have a tendency of doing is God gives us a commandment, and we do it for what we feel like is a long period of time. And then we be like, <sighs> just keep on inching right on back over to the next thing you know, we back entangled in that thing. And we like, how did I get here? Be consistent. Guys, do you know that nothing that you give up for God, that he won't, I think it's Matthew chapter 19. Nobody gives away mother, father, help that God won't give back to you. Guys, but here's the thing. It's not just, I think when people think about, oh, God, yeah, he's going to give it to me when I get to heaven. No, 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 no. God is looking to do some stuff right here on earth. But we are not in the place and in the position to get it. He said, you got to live on it. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. If you don't believe me, let's go to the scripture. Um, let's do 1 Corinthians 15, 58. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and unmovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Okay, I'm going to read that again. He gives, dear brothers and sisters, this is still Paul talking to church in Corinth. Be strong and unmovable. Guys, you got to get a, on this Christian walk, sometimes you got to get a good stance. Because what will happen is wind's going to blow. And you might do this. And you might do that. He said, but stay right where you are. Planted in Christ, in his word, in the Holy Spirit. St be strong and unmovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing that you do for the Lord is ever useless. So I know some of y'all be like, I've been doing this, God, for you for five years. I don't see my harvest. I don't see what you're doing. I don't, I don't, I don't. And he said, yep, yep, yep. It's never useless. Whether I do it on day one or whether I do it on day a thousand, whether I do it on day 10 or whether I do it on year 10, it's never useless. You will not out give God let me tell you that so if you give your life to him I promise you he'll give his life to you and see the thing about God is he just is right he just is so when he gives himself to you you got peace and joy and provision because he just is when he pours himself into you baby you got everything that you need he said I got wisdom for you I got it so all oh, you give yourself to him and he just gives you all kinds of stuff that's how good he is he said it's never useless what you do for me That's 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Let's go to Galatians 6 and 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. 
Who is that scripture talking to? Stop saying, I just quit. Lord, I just can't do it. And he's saying, no, 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 no. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Keep going, keep going. Because at the right time, just when you think I'm not coming through, just when you think you've had enough, just when you think, you know what, too much for me, here comes Jesus. And he's bringing everything that you need with him. Guys, being consistent sometimes is extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult because we have to stay there in that posture and in that position for Christ. And we don't want to. It hurts too bad. It gets too hard. Father, what do you mean? I got to I gotta forgive. I didn't even do nothing and I got to forgive them? He said, I need you. Four things. Get rid of the weight and the sin. What it is that you're asking me for, the promises that I have for you. He said, I cannot do it without preparation. I cannot do it. Thank you. I cannot do it in the position that you're in. Yes, you believe me. Yes, you faith me. All of that is great. But this is going to take a collaboration. It's time for us to grow. We're in our growth season. Guys, we got to stop making excuses. We got to stop making excuses for why we don't do the right thing and, you know, looking at everybody else's life. See, the thing that other people don't tell you about their life is they struggling too. They want it to appear one way on the outside, but they're struggling too. Put your blinders on and just focus on what God told you to do. Focus on what he given you instruction to do. He said... And once you show me that you can get rid of the weight and the sin, that you can discipline yourself, that you can get rid of the excuses, and you can be cons consistent, he said, then that's when promise. See, here's the thing. The promise is sure. It's sure. Everything that God has promised words way, everything that God has promised our pastor, our first lady, everything that God has promised you in your individual lives, he said, that's a sure thing. You can count on that. He said, but don't be like Saul. Don't be like Moses, where just, you, you being just, Lord, I did. No, you didn't do it. He said, do it to the full. Guys, what does pastor say? 99% disobedience is 100%, oh, I mean, 99% obedience is 100% disobedience. So if you obey God 99% of the time, but there's still that 1% that you don't, you have disobeyed him. Stop trying to manipulate what God told you to do. Well, maybe God didn't mean that. Yeah, he did. He said, I'm trying to grow you up. I'm trying to mature you. I'm trying to get you to live on ready. So this is what I'm going to ask. First and foremost, if there's anybody here, he said, you know what? I haven't even done the first step. I haven't even given God my life. I haven't even given him my life. I've had him really as a side piece. I haven't made him Adonai. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Everybody just close your eyes and bow your head. If there's anybody here who has not made Jesus their choice. Listen, the Bible says that he loved us so much that he sent his one and only begotten son to die for us. He thought you were worth, you deserved death and the grave and hell, but Jesus said, not so. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to die. I love you enough to die. And all he's asking in return is that you believe on him, that you receive him. That's all he's asking in return. If there's any who hasn't made Jesus their choice, I just want you to put your hand into the air, please. Bless your name. Anybody in here that said, you know what, if I was to, to die, 